Hi, welcome to Wellness Woodbridge. I'm your host, Ann Mazza of Vito Mazza Salon and Spa, and I'm so excited about today's topic. I have always, since I've been hosting this show, wanted to do a show on gardening. Having an at-home garden, just how to grow things, it's the perfect time of year to get excited about possibly putting in your little at-home garden at home. And I know that from my own experience, I just really don't have enough information to try to do what I'm doing. So I have a wonderful expert with us today. I have Connie Ellick, who's a very close friend of mine and a wonderful friend of our Woodbridge community. She does so many things, <laughs> but this is one of her areas of expertise that we're going to focus on today. But Connie, tell me a little bit about some of the things you're qualified to do, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, you're welcome. I'm thrilled to be here. Gardening is one of uh, the things that I'm very, very passionate about. I've been gardening since I was a child. Um, I would help my, my Bobshi because I'm uh, Polish background. And uh, she had a huge garden with strawberries and cabbage. She had cabbage heads that were just enormous and always fascinated me and uh, as I got older I just continued to garden and would take classes and courses from time to time. Rutgers had a beekeeping uh, course a few years ago. I did that. was looking forward to getting bees and at some point I will. I just haven't gotten them down just yet. But as far as gardening is concerned, um, now is the perfect time. I generally put my uh, peas in around St. Patty's Day. Mm -hmm. uh, did not this year, but uh, they're soaking as we speak because I generally take my peas and soak them 24 to 48 hours in a container of water mm -hmm. and that way they get fat and plump and they're ready to be planted. So when you say peas, because I am a novice, so this is going to be okay. a lot of backtracking for okay. Anne here. Um, the, are, where are the peas? Are they pea seeds? Are they dried peas? They're actually dried peas. So that uh, I would use to make pea soup. Correct. Peas, Absolutely From correct. the grocery store yes, in a bag. <laughs> exactly right. But I generally get them from a seed company. Um, okay. I happen to like, I don't know if I can plug them or not, but Vermont Bean Seed is a very, mm -hmm. very, it's an excellent company. I get a lot of my bean products from them directly. And I grow snacks. Uh, peas and oh, I, I grow. Uh, yeah, they're they're fabulous because of the. They're great for dips this time of year. I mean, everything. You can use them for everything. Yes, and you can toss them in any salad or just stir fried very very quickly. And I like uh, so the, besides the snow peas, I like the um, snap peas, and they are fabulous to grow. Watch grow. They're all trellised. And they grow up. Correct. They're trellised okay. up. Yes, and they can grow as high as five to six feet in the straight up vertically. Wonderful. Now my garden is a raised garden. Mm -hmm. It's like a 10 by 12 in a very sunny area. We have a pool, so I don't really have a lot of space for a big garden. So mm -hmm. I know some of the things that we might talk about today, I just don't have the space to do. I would love to have a big cabbage, but it's not going to happen. And sometimes I'll put in lettuce, mm -hmm. seeds, you know, and I'll mm -hmm. get a few heads of lettuce out of it, but then you have to replant to get that going? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. If you're doing a leaf lettuce, um, there's red sails, there are mesclins that you can grow. I've um, done arugula from Arugula, seed. yes, and it's easy. And, and all it you grows do, up quick. Just sprinkle them along the top of the bed, pat it down, water it well, and usually within a few days it starts to germinate. Now if you let it go, it'll go to seed and it'll, will, it will reseed itself. Okay. I have had it where it kind of sprouted out a little mm -hmm. bit That's if seeding. I didn't pick it quick enough. Exactly right. So, okay, now I'm learning. Yes, This is it great. Is. Now, let's backtrack a little bit. So, how do we prepare the garden at this time of the year? Maybe we don't even have a garden yet. So maybe some of the viewers are just thinking of doing this. What would you say would be the first step if you want to have an at-home garden for location and what you need to kind of get the whole thing going? As far as location, as you want a sunny spot, it's very important that whatever you're growing get anywhere from 8 to 10 hours of sun. Uh, and if you don't have that, you could use containers. You know, the container garden, there are grow bags out now by a lot of the different companies that it's just basically a heavily woven bag that you can plant with a, a not from your regular soil. You want to make sure you have a good garden mix or uh, I happen to like mushroom mix that I get from Bartel. Mm -hmm. Not plugging them either, but it's That's one of the fine. best it's one of the best products out there. And I usually um, get like an organic garden soil. 
and mm -hmm. I add that to what I have in there currently. That'll is that be fine. okay? Yes, that is. So you just kind fine. of supplement into it, and then when I add that bag in, do I have to mix everything? You do. How you did do. you go about that? Whether, whether you use a spade or whether you use a, a fork, either one, a uh, garden fork, obviously. Uh, you do you just have one with you or no? I did not bring one. So it's like me. more of a long tool. Yes, it's a long, long handled, both of them are long handled tools. I have raised beds throughout the backyard. So you want to make sure that you're not walking on the soil or the garden area that you're going to be planting in. So raised beds are the way to go or containers because that way you're not compacting the soil. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite, if I may, um, is a tool that I have that I use and this is well-worn trach. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a perfect tool because it's got the um, the one end has got like a pansy shovel and the other one has a, a cultivator. Point right. is broken because it's been well used. It's approximately 18 inches long. It's called a trache, T-R-A-K-E, and it's perfect for a lot of the things that you want to grow, like peppers. So you would put a pepper on one end, pepper on the other end, so you know no matter which way you go in the garden, it's going to be 18 inches apart. Oh, see, that's wonderful. It see, is. I know I'm putting mine too close. Yes, 18 inches. This 18 way. 18 inches. So I really only need like two plants because what happens to me is I go and buy plants in these little six packs. Yep. So why do I need six of them if I only have a 10 by 12 and I want a variety? It's I'm getting too many plants. You're getting too many plants. But the thing of it is, is that you can always this is put some in a, a container. A, put them in a container. And I do do that sometimes. But if I had two pepper plants here, let's say I usually do jalapenos. My right. husband loves his hot peppers. So I usually like will put you know, a few in the garden, should I also put like two pepper plants in you a could. container this yes. big? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you look at it, if you put it on either side, that would be enough. That and would I be have enough steaks room. that I usually will put uh, in. There. Peppers, sometimes you need the steaks, sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. You have uh, vegetable support systems that are also very, very good, like for your eggplant or your peppers. Um, you also know not to plant your sweet peppers with your hot peppers because then everything will be hot. Oh. Wow. Everything. See, I usually do my peppers, I do some herbs in the front, mm -hmm. and then I have tried tomatoes, and I'm failing miserably at the tomatoes. Well, they have, uh, you could do the grape tomatoes or the cherry tomatoes. I've tried that. If you take them and put them in a tub, and we did this over at uh, the Learning Garden in Perth Amboy. The okay, Perth Amboy I know campus. you're involved there. We'll yes. hear all um, about that. Uh, if I could just yeah, mention go it ahead. a little bit. Talk about that. Um, we decided to do the Learning Garden. It's been a few years in the making. It's part of Integrated Medicine Division. Uh, Dr. Regovic had and her crew of wonderful people, supportive people. Uh, we had been planning it for a couple of years, and last year was our first kickoff. Wonderful. And if anybody's interested, all they have to do is uh, take a ride over by the Perth Amboy campus, mm -hmm. and you can see we all have raised beds there. They're all high raised, supportive How beds. How many do you have? Uh, there's six beds there. Beautiful. Last year we did eggplant, we did broccoli, we did tomatoes. And the tomatoes were put in a large tub, and we used trellis on them and they grew to be about six feet tall so there were cherry tomatoes and grape tomatoes all over and the you place. put those plants together or did you separate the cherry and the grape uh, they were separated yeah okay. it doesn't matter because they'll, they'll cross and they're fine but we also had cucumbers and we had um, Oh, Lord, we had a lot. Potatoes. We grew purple potatoes in, in big tubs, and potatoes are one of the easiest things to grow because I know everybody that cooks has to, potatoes that start to sprout. Right. So once they start to sprout, it's not one of those things that you just throw in the garbage or you throw in a compost or you throw in the trash. You can actually cut the sprouted part, leave a little bit around it, and you can take that if you let it cure for 24 hours, it's fine. I generally do not. And then just stick it down about six inches in soil. And uh, once it starts to flower, because it'll start coming up from the ground, and it'll be green, leafy, and very, very pretty, and they'll have flowers at the end of it. You just keep piling soil on top of it, or you could take your grass clippings. So provide. on top of the flower? Y yes, on top of the green, on top okay. of the green. And it's you just mound it around the, the base of the, the roots that are coming up. And you'll see it'll start to flower. And once it flowers and it starts to die, you can actually move them back, move the soil back, and you can see the potatoes that are actually have grown in the ground. And so they, with one sprout, how many potatoes will you get? You can get like six. You can get six 
six or seven. Really? Seriously, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it really is. And how much room would you need? Like this, that's this what I'm bucket. To if figure. you, if this, I know this sounds kind of crazy, and it's well used and worn. But if you take something like that, the only thing that you would want is to make sure if you're using a grow bag, because the grow bags are about that same size, and just fill it with a good um, quality soil. Um, again Bartels and as long as it has drainage so that, that it just doesn't get there and rot so this right. way with the grow bags it's made of a weave so that the water will drain out, out away from it and uh, you could in this size bucket you could probably put three or four sprouts and you'd have a bucket of potatoes by the end of the season wow yeah it's so it's how fabulous. long would you say like the will you have the potato <laughs> uh, if you if you put your potatoes in in March or April like now and uh -huh. they're starting to sprout uh, by the end of the summer um, you'll have, depending, if you let them grow, you'll have tiny little ones. As soon as you see the flower, they're about the size of a quarter. So you let them grow until the vine actually dies. Once the vine dies, you know, potatoes are there. Now, what if you had a red skin potato that was sprouting? Could you do red absolutely. skins? So I, it could be any variety. Absolutely, So yes. maybe if you don't have a very large garden, you can do like little Yukon Golds or not do a baking potato. That's true. Yes, you can. Okay. I, I usually do... Um, the Red Bliss, uh, because that's one of my favorites, and I do Very a white, nice. so it is good. That's so much fun. It I'm is. so excited. It I'm going to try it. Now, I'm you could also, in the, in the grow bags, if you didn't have enough property, you could also do uh, onion sets. Uh, if you take, these are just ones that I had picked up. These are little sets that you can pick up at... Um, uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or I, I've seen them before, but yeah. I've never really understood. I got so. these from the tractor supply. Uh, basically, what they are is just tiny little onions that they call them onion sets, and you would stick them in the ground two to three inches apart. You could do them in rows, or you could take a bucket again and just put them all in there. And these are these are the yellow onions, and then I have red ones, and I have shallots. So I I bought them recently, and I like I said, I generally try to get everything in the ground around St. Patty's Day, but that didn't happen this year. Oh. Okay, so what but I, you can still do this late. Oh, absolutely. Like if we, you know, these viewers are not going to see this for a few weeks. Right. So we can certainly start our onions now. Yes. What can we start now before Mother's Day? Before Mother's Day, just about everything you can. You can, from seed, you can do your onions, your shallots, your potatoes, uh, your peas, radishes, carrots, uh, red beets, uh, which I love. Uh, you generally take a package of seeds. Again, I soak those for 24 hours just to give them a little head start, as okay. it were. And, um, because they have a rough casing, they probably. Do. They so that absolutely needs to do. just kind of get yes. ready you to go. You can do broccoli rob. You can do turnips. You can do... Um, there's just there's an immense number of things. If you mostly want, your root vegetables, I hear you yes, talking about. I don't yes. hear you talking about herbs or cucumber yet or any of that. That would be more May. That would be more May, unless you wanted to get a head start on them. And then you would take your six pack and you fill it with a good soil again or a soilless mix. And a soilless mix would be something that is that has uh, vermiculite and perlite in it, and it's mostly does very. Does it have like little white balls? Yes, it does. And it's yes. very, very light, so it allows the water and everything for the little delicate roots to grow. You could start, uh, it's not too early to start your tomatoes from seed, your peppers, your eggplant, your cucumbers, okay. um, or your, uh, your cauliflower you could do, you could do cabbage. Um, you could do Brussels sprouts, broccoli, so all of those can be started from seed. Great. Yeah. Um, you know what happens to me, Connie, that's a problem? I start, I do Kirby pickling mm -hmm. cucumbers because I like them crispy mm -hmm. and I like them small and I love to be able to go out there. We eat salad almost mm -hmm. every night, so I'll grab a cucumber. Um, they blow up. They get really big if they get filled with water toward the end of the season. When mm -hmm. I first start growing them, they're fine. So yeah. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. Am I, is it overwatering? Is something overwatering them? Is it the weather, the climate? In all probability, if they're blowing up, you didn't pick them fast enough. Okay. So that's so usually pick what, them faster. Pick them faster. Usually, if you want the pickling cucumbers, less than six inches. Usually, three to four inches is fine. And a lot of times, because they're green, like the leaves, we just lose them. Well, yeah, they get kind of lost in the back, and then. <laughs> It's just and then they're, they're, My husband will go in there and go, what's going on here? <laughs> and pull enormous. out like a hundred of them. And well, I'm the like, good thing <laughs> about that is that you can take those cucumbers that are oversized. And make pickles, right? Well, no. yeah, but the, the better thing to do, because if they're, they're bigger, just split them, take the seeds from them, and replant them. 
Really? Seriously. See, yeah. <laughs> you just replant. That's the part. I yeah. just don't know. You know, it shouldn't be this difficult. To it's like, not. And it's just we're so in the use of like going to Wegmans and God bless mm -hmm. anywhere we can mm -hmm. to get our, mm -hmm. you know, produce. But it's nice to be able to show the kids and to be able to do it from the ground. And I think it tastes delicious. Plus, it's fresh. It's like it right there. It is. Um, I love to be able to just go pull stuff when I have it or a hot pepper or whatever I need. Yes. Um, for cooking, but and the mint. The mint is my favorite, but it also kind of goes Very invasive. everywhere. Yes. But I love it. I mean, I also don't want to like stunt it, so it's hard for me to figure out how to contain that. How, what container. Would you do? Yeah. A container. <laughs> Absolutely. If you take the grow bag and you just have grow bags for the herbs, or you could take a very pretty pot and uh, grow it in the pots. Most people will, will do a combination of uh, rosemary and parsley. Uh, I happen to like tarragon, so I, I have tarragon a lot. In the in the garden, both in containers and out of containers, uh, parsley. But the mint you don't let go in the garden. No, because it's I very find it invasive. it grows better there, though. Like if I put it in the pot, I just feel like it's not, you know, really as nice as the one that's growing in my garden. I don't know why. Whatever, whatever makes you happy. But I know that it gets everywhere. It, like it I've already it. seen in my garden, it's coming back right yeah. now. Uh, somebody had uh, was kind enough or not uh, to give me a uh, lemon balm and um, didn't grow well for her, but she decided she was going to share it with me. And I have lemon, lemon balm everywhere, so for me it's very, very invasive. So, so certain things will just... They take over. Take okay. over everything. Yeah. Okay. And then what do you do at that point? What's um, the best way to like kind of get it under wraps? Well, you could take your little tool or you could take this is this is my second favorite tool, which is I call the hacker. And it's it's really very, very good. So you have the sharp edges edges here that you can get under everything or use the, the hacker part, just whack the heck out of it and throw it out or compost it. Okay. Okay. So basically like I find that when I plant everything, it looks great. Mm -hmm. Then it all starts to grow. And then I feel like it kind of gets a little overgrown. Mm -hmm. Then I don't maintain it as well. Like mm -hmm. in that maintenance stage, are you supposed to be tilling the soil in between everything yes. still? Yes. And pulling all the little weeds that yes. come up? Now that's the one good thing about, again, whether you use the, the trach, because if you have everything in rows or if, even if you have it in a container, you could take this and just you know, go cultivate it. it and go through it to get rid of whatever. So how deep do you go down? Oh, just it's just surface at that point. It's okay. Because you've already you've already prepared the yard, the, prepared the space, so everything is is clean and fresh. But it only takes a matter of two windy days, and you have weeds all over everywhere. Right. So it's you can pull them, or you can just cultivate around the, around the plants. It's good because it aerates the soil, mm -hmm. and of course, water is very important. So you want to make sure that your water source is very close to uh, your garden. Excuse okay. me, your garden area. Excellent. I also plant. Um, what are the yellow flowers called that keep the bugs away? Is there anything we can do to kind of be... Marigold? Yes, I okay. put marigold mm -hmm. around that. I have some deer on the property, so we try to, like, eliminate that. But our, it's inside the fence. But what is something that kind of keeps the pests away? Is there any natural thing that you do for that, or how the does that work? The pests that come in, if they're the little bugs... I hand pick, I squash uh, with with or without gloves, depending on how fast they are and so how fast I am. So what kind of little bugs? <laughs> well, we, we can. Do I mean, another. there's green. I know there's like sometimes I've seen like little green bugs. Those well, each are one is thing. very different. So okay. whether or not if you're growing uh, cucumbers, you'll get uh, a beetle. You'll get the cucumber beetle, and it's a spotted. Um, but you'll be able to tell if you have uh, leaf miner or anything else, you turn it over. If you see egg casings, and they can be a yellow color or sometimes they're white, and then you crush the leaf or remove the leaf and you crush it and get rid of it. Okay. Uh, most people that have grown tomatoes end up with a tomato hornworm at one time or another. And I they think can, I've seen those. Yeah, they're, they're um, dragon-esque. They very, can be very large, as, as large as your thumb, very thick, very fat, and they have little horns on them. And uh, if you ever see them in the garden, whether they're eating your tomatoes or eating your leaves or whatever, if they have white casings sticking out of them, those are the, the wasps. They're a predator, and you don't want to kill them. You want to let the wasps and the tomato hornworms live because that'll, they kill the hornworms naturally. Okay. Okay. So that's a whole thing. That's all. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we could do another oh, show on another bugs. Another show. Yes, we could. You know yeah. what? It's crazy because we live in New Jersey. I mean, this is really seasonal, mm -hmm. but I hear you saying that you're doing this starting March. Yes. 
where I would think to start in May. So, and then the later fall, like we can keep this garden going until we get our first frost. Yes. Yes, and if you cover, you can extend it because we always get that first frost and then it's beautiful for another two, three weeks. So you try to cover everything as much as you possibly can. Uh, your squash are very, very good. They usually, I usually start putting them in after May and June. You do the same thing with watermelon and cantaloupe. Uh, any of the seeds there can go be sown right into the ground. And just you need space and if you can't do with, just do the, the buckets or the, um, the planting mix, they're really, really good. You can take them anywhere in the yard and just mm -hmm. have a um, have a bag of soil and plant stuff in it. I find that my basil, we do make our tomato sauce mm -hmm. every year. And sometimes when I get to August 20th, which is when we're jarring mm -hmm. and, and doing the yeah. whole thing, I don't have enough basil left. It mm -hmm. kind of looks like it's dried up and maybe mm -hmm. it's got the flowers on it. Right. Can you tell me how to maintain my basil? <laughs> Absolutely. When you start seeing that stalk coming up with the flowers, just pinch it right pinch off, it off. I have and it'll that. start and make sure you water it because August is usually very hot anyway so just keep pinching and the more you pinching the, the thicker it'll get and the stockier it'll get I also put up tomatoes uh, jarred tomatoes so whether I'm doing sauce or eggplant parmesan sauce or tomato soup uh, you want all of that from your fresh tomatoes which are crazy in in August you've yes. got it coming out of your ears basically yes yes so how much do you water the basil? Because I find that mine's dry. Um, if you have it in a very sunny spot, you'll need to water at least twice, maybe three times a day. Okay, so, so I'm uh, probably you, underwatering probably. it. Probably. I thought I had it in too sunny of a location. No, it, the basil will take as much sun as you can give it. I have mine uh, generally southern exposure, so it's it gets sun all day long, and I'll water it in the morning before I go to the office or wherever I'm going that particular day. If I get home at lunch, but definitely after dinner, once the sun starts to get a little, you little less, hit it with a yeah, little something. absolutely. What about food for the garden? Do you do any type of a feeding it? Fertilizer. Fertilizer. Yes, yeah, side dressing. So not just what's in the soil. That's correct. Like um, a Miracle Grow. No, uh, I've been sorry. using that. <laughs> sorry, no. I'm, not, I'm not a Miracle Grow person. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my, help me. <laughs> my, uh, Jim's dad. Uh, you, Swore by Miracle Grow, and I and I. This is a true story. God help me. <laughs> when Jim and I first got married, and I moved uh, to Coolidge Avenue, his dad always had maintained the garden. It was not raised bed. It was just just flat, flat, and he used planks in between everything so that he'd walk on the the planks instead of walking on the soil. So when I decided that I was going to take over the garden there, I rototilled everything, and I had three earthworms, three earthworms, which is not good because right. earthworms, you need a lot of them, you, don't you? the earthworms are a sign of a healthy soil. Okay. So I compost also. So I have a compost bin, uh, several actually, and thought about doing the worms, but I haven't done the, the, uh, the wigglers yet um, because it was, they, I have a bunch in my garden. Yeah. They're, so maybe I have a good chance. You have a great chance. You I feel like when chance. I'm tilling that soil and I'm in there, I see them. Yes. That's wonderful. Cause then you know, you have a healthy soil okay. that, without having it tested. Great. It is. <laughs> And so, so one of the reasons that I did not use Miracle Grow was the fact that I, Jim's dad used it all the time, and I didn't see that it it was a beneficial thing. Okay. So what I do is I have uh, several products that I use. One is it's called Vegetables Alive and Tomatoes Alive from Gardens Alive, believe it or not. Okay. And it's uh, it's all natural. It's all, all organic. Um, is it like a sprinkly type of a yes? It thing is. That you it, just really. Well, you, you can do a, one of those detergent scoops, and as you're planting your tomatoes or your eggplant or your pepper, whether you're starting them from seed or you're just starting from, from sets that have already grown, you put uh, maybe a half a scoopful in the dirt, okay. in the soil that you're using, mixing it up, and then put your plant in. Mm. That'll give it an added bonus, and once it starts to flower, before it starts producing your tomatoes or your eggplant, I, give, I side dress it with another scoop around it and work it in the soil, so that by the end of the season and I'm serious my tomato plants are anywhere from 8 to 10 feet tall and they're they're enormous and peppers and eggplants are also just just tremendous produce now wow. we used that last year at the the learning garden at Raritan Bay oh, nice. and uh, we had absolutely outstanding eggplant and peppers what do you do with everything that you grow there 
at the Learning Garden. Yes. It's shared with patients, uh, the doctors, the nurses, people that come by and ask if they could uh, have some. We, we definitely share oh, it with the community. That's so, so nice. It is. It's good. And we will be doing a program starting the end of April, uh, Wednesdays from 12 to 1. I'll be doing an eight-week lecture series uh, teaching people how to garden and uh, gardening 101 and how to start a garden. I need and to come. <laughs> it'll be good. It'll oh, be good. Oh, that's great, yeah. Connie. Yeah, yeah. That's we had wonderful. last year. We had uh, the youngsters do it, and. Um, we have a big interest with a lot of the adults that really want to learn how to garden properly. So uh, I, I'm an organic gardener. Uh, I had read uh, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring as a, a sophomore in high school that affected me tremendously. So I do not use pesticides. Uh, okay. Everything that I use in the garden is safe. It's safe because it's going into the food that we eat. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that is such a great service to the community. I'm so glad you're doing that with Raritan yes. Bay. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so, so great that everyone in the community can come and enjoy that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, we find that integrated medicine uh, is one of the parts, part of the wellness uh, program. It's just well needed by the community. And we find that we have uh, Reiki practitioners there and we have uh, people that And I know massage. you do that also. Yes, I'm a Reiki master. I've been doing it for... Uh, 30 years and uh, it's it's wonderful just working with the energy it is that's great you have a beautiful piece about you I enjoy being with you because you. it relaxes me and I am hoping that um, everyone in our community will take advantage of all your knowledge today with all the gardening I know I'm going to I'm going to replay this show you know a few times before I start putting all of my plants in the ground but one minute before I let you go I'd like to talk about flowers and bulbs mm -hmm. because um, I recently had all my Easter flowers and I was very proud of myself because I cut all the bulbs off and I put them into the ground about five, <laughs> five, six inches down. Okay, six inches. Um, I have some deer, mm -hmm. so I know that I'm not going to get them all back because I think they like some of the bulbs. But I had hyacinth bulbs, mm -hmm. I had tulip bulbs, I think they like the tulips. Uh, I find that the squirrels are more problematic okay. than the deer. I have a lot of them too. Yeah, the squirrels can be a problem, but they can always be, be caged. There are, they have a heart traps. And uh, we can relocate them. So once they're caught, uh, peanut butter is a great uh, area which to stick in the cage and then okay. just take them to somebody else's neighborhood. Don't come to see Warren. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I have enough squirrels. <laughs> I have a lot of squirrels. My dog seems to like to uh, go out there yeah. and chase them. So yeah. he keeps them away of our inner fence, but I think on that outer fence. But I do have some of the flowers that come back. So yes. you can plant those bulbs. Absolutely. And I guess it's worth a try, you it, know, it better is. than throwing them out. And I've um, replanted, uh, I plant, replant the daffodils, I replant the tulips, I replant uh, hyacinths, I've got some lilies that I've planted. I didn't um, think I could do the lilies. Lilies you can do. You can usually get them for another year or two. And even with uh, geraniums, I know there's a lot of people that don't uh, winter over their geraniums. Some will take them out of the soil, shake them upside down and hang them upside down in, mm -hmm. a, in, a, in a basement or a garage. I leave them in the pots and just bring them in to the mm -hmm. to the spare garage. And so it's six inches down. Yes. Okay. Yes. I hope I went low enough. Yeah. We'll find out next year yeah, when I'm those sure. flowers come up or not. <laughs> yeah. And then your annuals. How low do you like to take them down when you have mulch? Maybe you have some beds with mulch. How far down do you put? Them? I leave I leave them where the where the plant starts and the roots go down. That's where I plant them. So I kind of separate the mulch first. Mm -hmm. Then I put them in. Correct. And then you put the mulch back. Put some mulch around it. Yes. Okay. Now you do that with asparagus also asparagus is a perennial okay. so and they have to be planted at least at least good six inches down or eight inches and you try not to disturb that bed because they'll continue to grow and uh, we had a bed of asparagus in Woodbridge and um, in Woodbridge we had a um, Wood burning fireplace. So Jim would take the ashes, and he thought he was helping oh, by boy. putting them in the. And he no. killed everything. That so was the end of the asparagus. Was, yeah, don't yeah don't put wood, don't put wood burning ashes in there. Well, you are a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> I probably need to come to your course for six weeks. I don't think I'm going to get enough in this half hour. But I just want to thank you so much for Indeed. sharing all of your knowledge with us. I hope that everyone in Woodbridge will go and enjoy uh, some time with Connie. If you'd like to go over to Raritan Bay and Wednesdays. take this course on mm -hmm. Wednesdays. From 12 to 1. 
If not, we hope that we've inspired you to put in your own at-home garden this season. Grow some plants, grow some vegetables, teach your children how to do it. It truly is an art form. We all have to eat. We should all try to eat well. And growing what we eat is just a beautiful way of sharing with our family. And well, if I might interject, I can tell you honestly that one of my grandsons had come over a few years ago when I had put in the, the potatoes in the grow bags. And he was so excited. He was so excited that when I showed him how the potatoes were actually growing, he grabbed all the little spuds that were in there and stuck them in his pocket to take home. <laughs> to take home because, to do his own. Yes, he was just so so excited. Well, it is tr it's truly proof of the beautifulness of nature. So thank you for sharing that with You're us. You're welcome. Thanks so much, Connie. And thank you for joining us today on Wellness Woodbridge. I hope that we inspired you. Go on home now, plant your garden, and we hope to see you back here very soon. Thanks so much.